Have you heard about Pink and Main's new ergonomic blender brushes? In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction into ink blending with a pretty cool tool. Hey, thanks for hanging out. My name is Amy England and welcome to Scrap This, Save That, a channel designed to teach you the basics of paper crafting. I'm starting out with my Tonic Studios guillotine trimmer and I'm trimming card panels at five and a half by four and a quarter inches. Here's the Pink and Main Ergonomic Blending Brush. They have a price point of about $10 each as of this filming. Each one comes with its own case, and each one has tiny, tiny bristles, but they're very, very thick and dense, so the whole brush is very soft. It's flat on the bottom for a larger coverage area. Now you can always tip it to the side, like you saw me doing right there with my hand, and that kind of makes it so that you can get some smaller detail. Today I'm using some Distress Oxide inks in Blueprint Sketch, Mermaid Lagoon, and Cracked Pistachio. This really is a beautiful, beautiful combination. I like to always start with my lightest color and go darker, especially if in this case I'm going to use one single brush to do all three colors. So Cracked Pistachio it is. The way I learned to do ink blending from watching Tim Holtz at least was to start on the mat and then slowly in circular motion work your way onto the paper. I'm noticing with these blender brushes though that's not really necessary. I can go right to the paper and still not have to worry about any kind of streaking or splotches, anything like that. So that is a super big plus in my book. I really do love using the oxide inks for blending. They just seem to go on top of each other beautifully. They're an opaque ink so that means that you can go back and forth between the two colors while they're still just a little bit wet and blend them really nicely. I like to take a nice clean dry cloth and wipe off my surface area before I start on the next color just to keep everything neat and tidy. As you can see now that I've started the second color there's a pretty harsh line between that green and that blue. Um, just stay tuned because we're going to take care of that in a minute. In the meantime, if you like what you see and you're getting some value from this video, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll know when more videos like this one are ready to watch. It's that little bell right down there by the subscribe button. I'm jumping into using the Blueprint Sketch ink now. I love this color. It's definitely blue but got a very kind of a purple tone, purple tint to it. So it works really well with all the blues and with all the purples. You may have noticed I'm going over these colors pretty thick like several different times just to kind of smooth everything out and get some of the markings and the lines out of the different colors. And this is where I'll tilt the brush and use the edges just to start to get a little bit of a blend between the colors. I'm going to give my brush a good little scrub right here so that I can get the darker blueprint sketch color off and start back over again with the cracked pistachio. That's going to make sure that that color is going to blend on the paper and not all over my ink pads. On my second go round, you'll see that the cracked pistachio, I'm going to take it a little bit farther over and start blending it into that mermaid lagoon. There's some pretty harsh lines on our paper, so we want to start blending one at a time, going back and forth between the different colors so that we can get a nice, even, pretty blend instead of looking more like a striped effect. I'll go over all of these colors back and forth several different times until I get to the point to where I really like what I'm seeing. I like the, the color blend and the variation and don't see, like I said, just stripes. You'll notice too I have a paper towel handy and that is to keep my fingerprints off of the darker colors and also to keep the darker colors off of my fingerprints. I find it's really helpful to use a paper towel or a towel uh, just as long as you don't start seeing the, the towel taking away any of the ink and making anything splotchy. I'm happy with the blend I'm seeing so now it's time to start with the warm colors. This time, instead of using the Distress Oxide inks, I'm going to use just the regular uh, Distress inks. This time I'm using Squeezed Lemonade, Spiced Marmalade, and Candied Apple. Once again, I'm going to start with the lightest color, which in this case is the Squeezed Lemonade. Yellow is such a light color that I end up going over it quite a few times just to get a really good, vibrant shade. I am noticing that with using the Distress inks instead of the Oxides, 
I'm having to use quite a bit more ink and having to do quite a bit more blending. The inks seem to be wetter, so I think that's going to help with the overall blend and the look, but I think I'm really having to saturate the paper with them. This is definitely going to need some time to dry after I get all three of the colors on. Notice how each time I switch to a new color of ink, I take the brush and give it a really, really good swirl into the ink pad. That's so that I can load the brush with lots and lots of color. Of course, then getting that color back off of the brush as we go to darker and darker shades gets harder and harder to do. So I started the second color, the Spiced Marmalade. It's a beautiful, beautiful orange and it blends really nicely with the Squeeze Lemonade. Those two colors mixed with Rusty Hinge, which I'm not using today, um, tend to make a really beautiful background when you're trying to do like sunsets for scenes on your cards. I really, really like that combination together too. Now once I scrub some of that orange off, it's time for the red, the candied apple, and oh boy is this stuff ever red. It's a beautiful color, but it got all over everything. As a matter of fact, I had to end up making a couple of different cards because the red kept getting mixed into the yellow. I don't even know what happened. And wait till you see what uh, it does to that poor blue towel. <laughs> it's going to be quite a mess. Um, I haven't washed the towel yet. I'm kind of scared to. So maybe down in the comments below, if you've done any washing of towels or laundry with distress inks you can let me know whether i'm gonna ruin a whole entire load if i put it in or if i'm gonna be safe i know it's water soluble i know i also don't want any of my clothes to be that color <laughs> so here again is where i'm gonna start working on actually blending the three colors so they don't look like three stripes of ink on the paper i'm going to use the uh, edge of the brush tipping it up again to get a really nice blend between the colors so we don't have those lines I had to put enough ink on this paper, really kind of almost saturate it with the ink to get the blend and the color tone the way I wanted it, the vibrancy. So the blend is, is working out pretty nicely. I think if you used a lighter touch though than this, it wouldn't blend quite as well. You can kind of get a good side-by-side -side glimpse here of what the two look like, the oxide versus the regular Distress Ink. I'm cutting an additional quarter inch off of the side and the top of each one of the cards just to give it a little bit of a border when I put it on a white card base. So total we're going to have card fronts that are five and a quarter by four inches. Once I have those like I want them then I'm going to get out my Tim Holtz stamping platform and use a stamp from Waffle Flower. It's called the Oversized Thank You Stamp Set. This stamp set came out a few months ago and I super duper love it because it's so big the stamp takes up the whole entire card front, which means minimal stamping and a super easy card to make. I'm using the magnets that comes with the stamping platform to make sure that I can get my card to stay where I want it and not move around too much. And then I'm gonna center my stamp right onto the card where I want it to go once it's ultimately stamped. I can close the lid of the platform and pick up the stamp and know exactly where it's gonna land. Even though my stamp is a little bit sticky because it's brand new and it moves the paper, since I had the paper butted right up in the corner, I know I can just put it right back there and everything will go back to where it's supposed to be. When I have a new stamp that's got a large stamping area like this, I like to take my hand and just kind of move it around the stamp a little bit. The oils in my hand will coat the stamp just a little bit and keep it from being so sticky and it'll give me a really nice impression. I'm using Versamark Onyx Black Ink to stamp my big thank you sentiment. I really love this ink because it's super, super dark and very, very bold. I got just a little black ink right there on my design, which completely sucks, but I can use the cracked pistachio and go back over it and you won't even be able to see it when I'm all done. I'm using that same thank you stamp to do my next card. The really nice thing now about this stamp positioner is that if you don't get a really good impression the first time, you can go over it again and again and again. Even though I think I cut it out of this, I probably went three times, four times maybe with the thank you because there was just so much area to cover to get it nice and dark and pretty. 
I'm using pre-made card bases just to use them up because I have them already, but you can also use a five and a half by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock. I like to use 110 pound white cardstock and fold it in half to make a card base. I'm gonna center my card front right there on that white background and voila, card number one is done. I always like to check and make sure right before I put the card on the card base that I open the card base and make sure that it's pointing the right direction. Otherwise, why go to all that work and then have your card be upside down? And here is card number two finished. I think those ink blended backgrounds make a pretty impressive card. If you'd like to learn more tips, tricks, and techniques, make sure and hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you know when new videos are coming. And in the meantime, I'll leave another video right here for you to watch. Thanks so much for hanging out and having a wonderful day. Bye.